Hey everybody, I'm here to show you how to use the note editor to overlay one scene on top of the other. So as you see here, I have my basic blender. I have a different theme, and I'm in Ubuntu Studio. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the new theme. But first I'm going to rename this to something more useful, such as Cube. So we have a cube in the middle. And I'm going to add new, full copy, and sphere. Now you can name these whatever you want or use an existing scene. This is just for the tutorial sake. Now, since I said I'm going to use Node Editor, I'm going to open this up. So I come over here to Node Editor and click on this button and use nodes. We're not going to need to compose it yet, that's going to come later. So now I have this render layers. So we're going to duplicate that, Shift D, and make this one cube and this one sphere. So now if we render that one, and we'll render this one, you'll see the same thing. That's because we haven't made this a sphere yet. Now if we get rid of this and add a UV sphere instead, when we render, we get a sphere. Now I want this cube to be here, so it's smaller and up in the corner. So I'm going to add a distort scale, scene size, and 0.2% of its original size. And now I'm going to move it. So for that I need to distort translate. 250 200. That's just a wild guess. So I'm going to try this by going to add output viewer. And that looks about right as you can see. So I'm going to call that good. So now what we want to do is we want to put that on top. So we're going to add color alpha over, which basically means it takes the alpha channel out of this one and overlays it on top of the sphere scene. So I'll add these two together, and now I'm ready for an output composite. Now to use the composite, I'm going to come over to my scene and click on do composite and render. Now you'll see the cubes up in the corner. Ta-da! Now, a few things you should be aware of. I put these numbers in. However, when I change the size of the render, if I change it to 25% and click render, no more cube. That's because these numbers in the node editor are not scaled along with the frame size. So beware of that and keep that in mind as you're working on your projects. The other thing is that blue around the cube here. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that in just a second. So let's say I want to make an animation now. And I want that to fade in after a few frames. To do that, I'm going to add a time node. Time. This is the curve of the time. Start and end. I'm going to keep that the same as these, so this is my whole animation. And I'm just going to go like this. So at the very beginning, the opacity of the cube is going to be zero. And it's going to go all the way up to one and stay at one after that and it's going to fade in because it's not a straight above the other one. So if I want to fade in a little longer or shorter. Now for the factor I'm going to bring this down over to the alpha over factor. So I'm going to animate this just as I talk to you a little bit more. So I'm going to click animate and there we go. Now you're going to notice that there's nothing up in this corner. Keep that in mind and I'm going to tell you something in a second. But in the meantime while this is animating I'd like to point out that it's rendering both frames, rendering the sphere and the cube, even though we're only seeing the sphere right now in the animation. This is the downside. However, the reason I stumbled across this method is because Burp, the big and ugly rendering project, burp.bunk.dk, is the render farm that I use. And for them, it's easier if I use more computers using the node editor to do this than it is if I use the video sequence editor because the video sequence editor limits you to full frame rendering and for some of my projects their computers not all their computers it's a distributed rendering farm can hand full frame and so you can use more computers if you use split frame rendering which the node editor allows as you can see now see how the cubes here it's faded in so I'm going to call it good enough and play this back to you now look up in that corner see how the cube fades in That's what we're aiming at. Now, there's still that halo of blue around it. That's because that's the scene color. 
it's the background color so if we come over to the cube scene it's this it's just a little bit of the halo that comes around because the scene is naturally lighting the cube a little bit so one thing we can do is to change this color to make it blue and then we can come back over to our other scene and we'll render it again and it went away where did you go oh I need to go to a later frame let's say 250 there we go now it's got the white halo another thing you can do to make it look more on purpose is add some edge settings except not to this one to our other to the cube edge sphere render now it's got that box around it and then you make the edge a little bit bigger so you can play around with the settings a little bit and have happy blending thank you very much for watching